Hi again then guys and welcome to another top 10 countdown list on Gran Turismo 6 and this particular countdown is for a very popular but also fairly controversial class of vehicles. There's actually a couple of different categories of car within the same broader category of Le Mans style prototypes. But this particular countdown is covering LMPs and Group C machines, which are of course different generations. Now on this list, we're only covering 10 cars. And the problem with that is there are a lot more than just 10 strong Le Mans cars. We could have made the list longer, but the format is top 10. So I had to cut some from the list and all of the Le Mans cars in the game are good in different ways. There is, as far as I'm concerned, not a single bad one. There are just some that are better than others. So there will definitely be some on this list that people won't agree with and probably even more so some which aren't on this list, which people will have wanted to see. But this is not a top 10 fastest list. That's very important to note. This is the top 10 best vehicles all round. That's a combination of price, beginner friendly nature, professional range of competitiveness, etc. That's everything all together how good the car is overall. And as always, if you would like to see more information about any of the cars in this list, I will put a link to a full playlist of a breakdown of all of the Le Mans cars which I did, the first review series that I did on this channel in fact, and also tune setups for each of the individual cars. But now let's get into the actual top 10. Kicking us off in 10th place is a very popular choice of Le Mans car, the Toyota TS30 Hybrid. It cannot be upgraded, and that prevents it from getting an even higher position on the list, but the reason why I'm including it is because it's just such a good vehicle. It's considered to be by many an OP vehicle for its PP level, and that's a fair point, but be that as it may, it's very useful for PP racing, for online racing, seasonal racing, time trials, etc. It's an excellent endurance car due to its fuel economy, very low stress driving manner. It's just a great car to work with. In ninth place, I'm putting the 2003 Le Mans winning Bentley Speed 8. Basically, this is a hardtop version of the Audi R8. It's based on the same technology, and therefore it's not surprising that it gained victory in the Le Mans, because of course the Audis are very successful as well. This car is just really good all round. The top speed is strong, the acceleration is very good, it's a premium, which is always a nice touch, and the handling, although not necessarily as beginner-friendly as something like a TS30, it is still far less twitchy than something like, for instance, a Pascalo Hybrid. In 8th place, I'm putting another popular choice, the Peugeot 905, the lightest of the Group C Le Mans cars in the game at 750 kilos. The engine is based on Formula 1 technology, it's an absolute screamer. This car won both the 1992 and 1993 Le Mans, and it's just a great all-round car. The top end performance though isn't that strong, not just for top speed, but for top end acceleration as well. And it can be, depending on tuning, a little temperamental for some drivers. In seventh place, because of course this isn't a speed list, it's an all round list, were it for speed it would be much higher, the Audi R10. A monster diesel engine powers this car with over 1,250 horsepower, around 1,500 foot-pounds of torque, and it is the fastest Le Mans car in the game at 300 miles per hour under its own power. This car is quite simply overwhelmingly quick in a straight line. Nothing else comes close, not even the Pascalo Hybrid can outrun this car. It's quite simply the fastest Le Mans car in a straight line. In 6th place, speaking of Pascalo, is not the Pascalo Hybrid, but actually the Courage GV5, the V10 powered model, which used to be the best Pascalo back on, say, Gran Turismo 4, for instance. This car is severely underappreciated. It falls into a bit of a no man's land because the Courage C60 is a more entry level vehicle and the Hybrid is the obvious choice, so this car can easily be overlooked. But I consider this 
to be the best Pascalo. It has over 1100 horsepower, but still less than the hybrid. That being said, it still does 290 miles per hour and has much, much more forgiving handling than the somewhat twitchy C60 hybrid. In fifth place, I'm putting the very expensive, but arguably deservedly so, 1989 Le Mans winning Mercedes Sorba C9. This was the ultimate Le Mans car back on Gran Turismo 4. You could only win it by doing the Formula One World Championship, and it was actually one of the few cars which was worth that kind of effort. That still goes on Gran Turismo 6. It's very expensive at 2.15 million credits, but it's a brilliant all-round machine. It's more forgiving and less twitchy than, say, the Minolta or various others like it, but at the same time, it's overwhelmingly quick, and it's just a really dependable all-round Le Mans car. In fourth place, I'm putting my personal favourite Group C car of all time, the last of the long tails, the Nissan R92CP. This is a monster of a car, the most powerful Le Mans car ever in real life, in qualifying form with 1200 horsepower in real life, not just on the game. That is crazy power. On the game, the top end performance is ironically not as good as some others, like Pascalos and Audis. But overall, the R92 CP is such a good Le Mans car. The handling's a little twitchy for some people, but if you can master it, there's very little that can outrun this car. In third place, I'm putting a car which has very quickly earned a name for itself since its introduction on Gran Turismo 4 as being a dominating force within Le Mans car, Group C car, etc categories. Ironically, the Minolta from Toyota never ran in the Le Mans, but that being said, it can still more than run with any LMP and Group C car on Gran Turismo. In fact, many of them, it can completely dominate. It has the straight line performance of something like a Peugeot 908 or Pascalo Hybrid, but the cornering ability of, say, an R92 CP or a Sorba C9. It's a brilliant all-round Le Mans car, and the fact that it's so strong at everything is why it's so high on this list. In second place, I'm putting the arch-nemesis of the Audi R10, the Peugeot 908. This car has a colossal amount of torque, massive power, and I would actually recommend the base model because it's even more powerful than the other models with 1,202 horsepower. The Peugeot is quite simply a strong enough all-round Le Mans car that although it's kind of easy to underappreciate how good it is, it is nonetheless one of the best you can get. It has kind of a quiet ability of just dominating most tracks. It's a car which is easy to underappreciate but one which will pretty much always give you a strong end result, if not a victory. And in first place, like with the VGT Top 10, it may seem a bit repetitive to put this car in first again, but that's what I truly believe. The Mazda LM55, as far as Gran Turismo's current lineup goes, is quite simply the most impressive all-round Le Mans car in the game. Of course, it doesn't run in any real racing, but it's such a good car. It has far less power than most of the other cars on this list, while simultaneously being capable of 290 miles per hour. The all-wheel drive also means that in wet weather conditions, it's a dominating force, and it's by far the cheapest Le Mans car in the game at 1 million credits. The LM55 is beginner-friendly, overwhelmingly good, it's quite simply, in my opinion at least, the best all-round deal for a Le Mans car currently on Gran Turismo. But that's it overall for my particular pick of the 10 best all-round Le Mans cars. This will probably be a more contentious list than usual because people feel very strongly about their favourite Le Mans cars. And as I said, all of the Le Mans cars, and I mean all of them, even stuff like the Zytec or the Nismo LM car, they're all brilliant in their own way and I do love all of them for different things. But that's it overall for this particular list. As I said, there is more information about these cars in the description down below, as well as the ones that weren't featured here. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.